Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers, and this morning I'm looking at a book from Oxford University Press. Not the easiest book in the world to read, but it's got an interesting point of view to put forward. It's got a title, again, which is not the easiest, Governance by Indicators. What on earth does that mean? We'll come to it. The subhead is Global Power Through Quantification and Rankings. It's been edited by a number of people. Kevin E. Davis, Angelina Fisher, Benedict Kingsbury, and Sally Engel Merry. As I say, OUP have produced it. The subtitle we've given it for our review on the web is Indicators as Tools of Global Governance and Influences of Global Power. Global governance being the governments that run the various countries on the planet. Now, a project conducted by the Institute for International Law and Justice at New York University School of Law led to this book from OUP, and it centres on indicators and governance by information being closely linked with the ILLJ's major project on global regulatory governance and global administrative law. So we're looking at government and admin law, basically. The book is the first to be published as part of the OUP's Law and Global Governance series. There it is, front cover, side, and then the back. You've got some interesting um, a little dust jacket with some comments on the back there. You've got a detailed index, which starts there. The front, you've got, again, some interesting stuff on the dust jacket. And then you've got the basic book itself. There isn't any paragraph numbering, but there are lots of footnotes, which is, of course, very helpful for an academic publication. And what you've got right at the front is various acknowledgements of the information they've gleaned. And then you've got the table of contents itself, which you can see. Now, this is not an easy book to go about reading. And make it clear right at the beginning that I found it quite complex, because the issue is, what are indicators? In the book's introduction, three of the editors, including Sally Engel Merry, admit that there is no agreed meaning of the word indicator. Nevertheless, they view indicators as an important emerging technology in the practice of global governance, defining them at least partially as named collections of rank-ordered data that purports to represent the past or projected performance of different units. And a unit could be a country, for instance, or the institution or corporation therein. Such data, simplified and processed, can be used to compare particular units with others and to evaluate their performance by referring to one or to a number of standards. The point being that you can generate from this governance by indicators whether in fact it's been a good or a bad performance. And I think that in essence is what it's about. Now we're not going down the league table line here. We do say in the review, can one assume then that a league table is an indicator? Probably, but not necessarily is the answer to that. I'm not going to go down the academic road of league tables today. Another example of indicators might include a rule of law index where which indicates, as it were, the level of respect for the rule of law in a particular country in a given year. So I think what I would say is that the concept of the indicator is to give you some indication, if I can use that word, of the levels of performance of a country and where they stand with regard to their neighbours. And I think that's about as far as I can take it in terms of the very general picture. Do have a look at the book itself because it's a fascinating study and I'm sh quite sure that is one that we will be coming back to in the course of time, because this is just the start of the OUP's series in this particular area. So thank you to all concerned for a most interesting and um, informative point about indicators. Bye-bye.